Welcome to this new tutorial. Today I want to share how you can create an interactive 3D map using Blender, Blender GIS and Sketchfab. All of the tools that I'm going to use in this tutorial are free to use. So let's get started. Alright, so let me quickly show you the interactive map that I recently created for a school project. So you can see that this runs within my browser, it is embedded into my website. I can easily move around on this map and I can even place annotations with some text uh, that I'm going to show you how to add in later on. First let's jump into Blender. So I'm going to open up a new Blender project and let me just quickly enable the screencast keys. So in the bottom left corner you can see all the shortcuts that I'm going to use. And first of all I want to delete all of the default objects and instead we're going to use the Blender GIS plugin. If you don't have this installed already, simply go to this website. I'm going to paste the link to this in the video description and then download this plugin. Just click on this button and then choose download zip file. Then within Blender go to edit, open the preferences and under add-ons you can go up to this button and choose install from disk Select the zip file that you just downloaded and then install it. So let me just quickly search this, Blender GIS. Here you have a few settings that you can adjust if you need to. And also make sure that this checkbox is ticked so that the add-on is actually enabled. Once this is done, you can go back to the 3D view. And now you should have those GIS options. So let's open it up. And first we want to import our geodata. So let's go to web geodata and choose base map. Here you can select from a few different sources, but I'm just gonna go with the default Google and satellite and then click on okay. So now this map loads, you can use the mouse wheel to zoom in and move around. Make sure that you have stable internet connection for this to work and you can simply search for the location that you want to use or you can press G which will open up the search bar and you can enter whatever location you want to look for. So in this case I want to search for Zermatt and I'm also going to increase the zoom level to let's say 15, press OK and you can see that we're now in this little mountain village in Switzerland called Zermatt. Right over here we have the Matterhorn that I would like to import. So let's use the mouse wheel to adjust the zoom range so that we have everything that we need within the frame and then simply press E which is going to export it and now we have this map on this plane. This already looks nice however uh, this is a very mountainous region and I would like to have the uh, relief of the mountains as well. Let's fix this by keeping this plane selected then go up to GIS and on the web geodata this time choose get elevation. Here you have a few different options to choose from. The SRTM 30 meter is the highest resolution version that is available. So I'm going to choose this and we also need an API key. To get this simply go to uh, this website. I'm also going to paste the link in the video description. And here you can simply log in, it's completely free and you will get this API key that you can copy and then paste in Blender, press OK and it will just take a few seconds to load. And now you can see that we have the elevation data on our map and this already looks really nice. So we can go in here, we can see the Matterhorn, this beautiful mountain and uh, yeah, it looks just really nice. So I want to make this plane also a bit thicker as I showed you in the example before. So uh, let's go to the modifier properties and we want to apply those modifiers that we currently have. But before that, I would like to increase the resolution a bit. So if you look closely, you can see that the resolution is not too high. So uh, let's change those values. I think I'm going to go up to a value of 8 or maybe even 9. So we have a nice resolution on those mountains 
and then simply go to the modifier and choose apply and do the same for the displacement modifier and now we have this uh, mesh and the deformation is burned into the mesh data. So now in order to give it thickness let's switch from object mode to edit mode then press A to select everything and then E to extrude. Per default this should be locked to the Z axis so we can just move down then left click and I want to make this flat on the bottom so with all of the bottom vertices still selected I'm gonna press S and then Z to scale them along the Z axis and then simply press 0 to straighten this out perfectly. So now we can go back into object mode and I think I don't want to make it that deep so let's go back into edit mode press G and set in order to move those vertices up. So I think this should look nice and then go back into object mode. So this worked however I want to have a different material on those sides and on the bottom. So let's go back into edit mode and we want to have everything selected on the bottom and on the side. So in order to do this with the bottom still selected we can go up to select and choose more or less and choose more. So now we have all the side faces and the bottom faces selected. We can go to the material properties, add in another material. Let's create a new one, let's call this side and with all of those faces still selected click on assign. So now when we exit edit mode you can see that we have a different material on the side and on the bottom. However it still looks kind of ugly since we uh, have so many vertices that we extruded and we can simply fix this by going back to the modifier properties and under normals choose weight normals. So now the sides and the bottom look really clean. Then also apply this modifier and now we're ready to take this into Sketchfab where we're gonna do the final adjustments. So uh, we need to export this model in order to import it into Sketchfab. So with the model still selected go up to file export and I want to use GLTF. Then simply search for a folder on your desktop where you want to save it, give it a name. I'm going to call it Matterhorn and include the selected objects and then simply export it. So now we are ready to jump into Sketchfab. So once you're logged in you have this upload option right here and keep in mind that with the free version you have just 10 uploads per month that you can do for free. So uh, let's click on upload, select it and upload it. Here you can add an additional title, description and so on. And also keep in mind that this model will be public. If you want to keep it private or password protected, you also need to create a subscription with Sketchfab. It will take some time for the model to process, but once it is done, you can preview it up here. So you can see that this worked and we can click on edit 3D settings to improve it even more. So there are a few things that I would like to adjust. First of all, I like to add a bit depth of field to my 3D models. Uh, so let's go to the post-processing filters and enable depth of field. So now you can see that we have blurry foregrounds and backgrounds and I just like the aesthetics of it because it makes it feel uh, more like a miniature model. But you can uh, turn this on or off depending on your preferences. Then I also like to enable screen space reflection just to make it look a bit more realistic. And I also want to slightly adjust the material of our mountains. So let's go to the material options and select the rust material. This is uh, the mountain material that we created. And I just want to bring down the specularity a bit so we get a 
bit less reflections. I don't want to put it all the way down, but let's say somewhere around the value of 0 0.2. So now I think our model looks really nice. And uh, there is just one more thing I want to do, which is add a bit more information to this 3D model presentation. So I'm going to go to annotations. And uh, now you can go wherever you want with this 3D model. So I want to add an annotation to this mountain. Then uh, place the camera where you think this uh, object is nicely visible. Maybe set the focus and then double click. And now you can add an annotation. So I'm going to call it Matterhorn. And you can add a description. I'm just going to add a placeholder text. And then you can just go on and add as many annotations as you want to. Make sure to nicely place the camera, then double click to add a annotation. This one I'm going to call Corner Gletscher. And let's add one last one for this little village down here, which is called Zermatt. And before we save the changes that we just made, I want to look for a nice uh, perspective where we can see our complete model. So place the camera in a nice way and then just simply save view. And this is going to be the default view once someone opens our 3D model. Once all of this is done, simply save the settings and then exit. So now you can finish up the title and descriptions. And once all of this is done, simply save and then publish. So now let's take a look at our final model by clicking on view my model. And you can see that we have this default view that we just set. You can move around. We can make this full screen so it looks even better. Then take a look at those annotations and you can click through them and get the text and descriptions of what we wrote about our model. So I think this is a really nice way to demonstrate maps. It's also really nice that this works completely in the browser and you can easily share this with whoever you want to. From here we can simply go back to edit 3D settings to make more adjustments. And if you click through all those options, you will have a lot more that you can adjust if you want to. But I'm just going to exit and leave it at what we have. And finally, I just want to show you how you can embed this into your web page so you can have it on your website just like I have right here. So in order to do this, simply go down here and click on embed. Right here, you have a few options that you can adjust. And once you're happy with all of the settings, simply choose copy to clipboard. Then just go to the website editor of your choice. In my case, this is uh, Squarespace. I already created a new page and I'm just going to add a new blank section and then add in an embed option or an embed block. Let's place this in the middle. And in here, we can simply place this code snippet. And you can see that now our 3D model runs within our website. However, I found that when we do this uh, with the default code, it turns out that uh, the 3D model is really small. So I like to adjust the code snippet so that the 3D model shows bigger on my page. I don't know how to code, so I use ChatGPT for this. So I simply copy in the code and then let it know what I want to do. So let's just copy the code that ChatGPT gave me and try again. So add in this code snippet. And now we can make this even bigger. So let's use the full width and save this. So when we now check this, you can see that I have this nice 3D map uh, directly embedded onto my website. That's it for this tutorial. Thank you very much for watching and I hope you can use this technique for your own projects. And if you have any further questions, feel free to contact me 
or leave a comment down below. Thank you very much and goodbye.